you welcome to our Sunday school lesson for the 14th of July 2024 and our topic is the spirit empowered church the spirit empowered church let's pray father we want to bless your name and worship you oh God for another opportunity to share your word with your people Lord I receive help even as by the Holy Ghost and I pray for my brethren everywhere Lord, that will listen, that will watch, that the same Holy Spirit, O oh God, will empower us. The same Holy Spirit will enable us. The same Holy Spirit will give us understanding and the grace to obey that which you are teaching us today. Thank you, Father, as we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, let us take our first reading from Luke chapter 3 beginning to read from verse 21, Luke 3, 21 to 23. When all the people were baptized, it came to pass that Jesus also was baptized. And while he prayed, the heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended in bodily form like a dove upon him. And a voice came from heaven, which said, You are my beloved son, in you I am well pleased. Now Jesus himself began his ministry at about 30 years of age, being as it was supposed, the son of Joseph, the son of Heliah. Okay, please, Luke chapter 3. Um, Luke 3. Go down to, no, no, sorry, Luke 4. Begin to read from verse 1. Luke 4 from verse 1. Then Jesus, being filled with the Holy Spirit, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being tempted for forty days by the devil. And in those days he ate nothing, and afterwards, when they had ended, he was hungry. Okay, let's stop there for now. Now, last week we were looking at the beginnings, the origins of the church. And we saw that the church was not just a New Testament concept. It started in the Old Testament, one form or the other. Now we're going to look at the purpose, the help, the ministry of the Holy Spirit in the church now. And the ministry of the Holy Spirit in you. As an individual and then we look at what the Holy Spirit can do and is actually doing in our communities and in our country first of all therefore let's look at what did the Holy Spirit do for Jesus Bible calls him the author and finisher of our faith he is our perfect example how did the Holy Spirit help him that is what we have the first reading, Luke 3. Bible says Jesus was baptized. That was water baptism by John the Baptist. After that, the Bible says the heavens opened and the Holy Spirit descended on him. And then we read, having received the power, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, he now went ahead for his ministry. If Jesus needed the power of the Holy Spirit, if Jesus did ministry by the power of the Holy Spirit, if Jesus overcame by the power of the Holy Spirit, who are you to think you go through life as a Christian without the power of the Holy Spirit? That's a joke. That's a joke. People say, some people say that once you have become a Christian giving your heart to Jesus, you have the Holy Spirit, that's true. But when Jesus got baptized, he still needed a separate experience, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. 
That is true. And that is what we have read. Yes, when you have Jesus, you have the Father and the Son. But then you still need the infilling and overflowing of the power of the Holy Spirit as initially evidenced by the speaking in tongues and many places by uh, prophesying. And then the other gifts begin to manifest as we see God and as God gives the grace. So it is an entirely different experience and you and I need it. It is not religion. What happened was that when a lot of the churches, a lot of the missionaries came and established churches, they didn't tell us that side. Be a good person, baptize in water, pay your tithe, give your offering, and so on and so forth. And then they begin to teach the Bible. But, as we now later, people start saying, come on, especially in Nigeria, how come we read this power of the Holy Spirit everywhere in the New Testament and we, we don't experience it? What is actually going on? And those people got together and began to pray and seek God. And just like we're going to read in Acts of the Apostles, the Holy Spirit came upon them. Praise the Lord. What did the Holy Spirit do for Jesus? Number one, after he was baptized in the Holy Spirit, the Bible says the Spirit led him to the wilderness to be tempted. So Jesus could not have survived the temptations for 40 days and 40 nights in the wilderness without the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Ghost empowered him to overcome temptation. That's number one that we see there. Temptation came. But because of the power of the Holy Spirit. In the first place, it was the Holy Spirit power that sustained him for 40 days and 40 nights. 40 days, 40 nights. <laughs> Let me advise you. Don't go fasting for 40 days and 40 nights if you don't have the Holy Ghost to sustain you. Don't. So, the sustenance for 40 days and 40 nights was because of the power of the Holy Spirit. We are looking, we are looking at the Spirit-empowered church. So, Holy Spirit sustained him and continued to sustain him. If he did that for him, then you and I should also depend on the Holy Spirit to sustain us and then to overcome temptation. And following on from there, Jesus now continued to minister in the power of the Holy Ghost. I mean, we're not overflowing that. All the miracles, raising people from the dead, healings, and so on and so forth were because Jesus had the Holy Spirit. Some people make a mistake and say, well, Jesus was God. <laughs> yes and no. Jesus came. The Bible says he was given a body. He is second person of the Holy Trinity. He was in heaven before the foundations of the world. From the beginning, he was with the Father. But as for operating on earth, he didn't operate as God. He had to pass through what we pass through. He had to be hungry as we are. God is never hungry. So he walked on earth, received the Holy Ghost, prayed overnight, did all sorts of things, so that when he passed the baton to us, we'll be able to do that which he did. We are humans. And he was operating as a human being, showing us that, look, I have, Bible says he laid aside his divinity and took up the form of a human and taught us that what he did, we can also do. That was why he said in John uh, chapter 14 and in verse 3 says, the works that I do, you shall do. And even greater works than this you shall do because I'm going back to the Father. 
So the Holy Spirit empowered Jesus. We need the Holy Spirit empowering us, praise the Lord. Now, what about the church? What about the church? Let's look at Luke, 40, Luke 24, verses 46 to 49. Luke 24, 46 to 49. He said to them, Thus it is written, and thus it was necessary for the Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem, and you are witnesses of these things. Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endured with power from on high. Okay, let's go to Acts of the Apostles 2. Begin to read from verse 1. Acts 2, 1. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sudden a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of a fire, and one sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Okay. That was also, we are looking at what the Holy Spirit did in the church. Let me advise, are you a pastor? Are you an evangelist? Are you starting a ministry? The first thing you do is to make sure that you are filled with the power of the Holy Ghost. The second thing is to make sure that your members are filled with the power of the Holy Ghost. I went to a church somewhere. I was invited to, to, to speak. And I think it was men and women. I can't remember whether they were children because I, I'm not sure it was a regular church day. Anyway, I went there and the topic was baptism of the Holy Spirit. And after the ministration, after speaking, I invited people to come forward to be prayed for, for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Out of the church of over, of over 100 people, I think there was only one person that came forward. I was wondering, why are other people not coming? Why are other people not coming? And then I asked the friend, the, the, one of the kings in the church, I said, why are they not coming? He said, they are all filled with the Holy Ghost. I said, what? The whole church. He said, yes. Bro, that was good. It shows that as long as the leaders know, number one, the value of being filled with the Holy Ghost, the power of God at work, they should emphasize it and make sure that every single person member of the church, adult member, people who are born again, are filled with the Holy Ghost. It helps a lot, goes a long way to make sure that the church progresses. Bible says, Jesus says, how can God not give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? Say, anybody that asks, that seeks, will find. That asks, will receive that knocks the door will be open to them don't tell me that is not for it is for you when it comes to the individual gifts healing miracles all those kind of ones people can argue as they want that's different but make sure that you are filled with the Holy Ghost make sure if nothing else that you blast tongues ah, la, 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 lo, lo, lo. That is not the, the, the topic. We're not going into that today. But if you speak in tongues, you've gone, a, you go, you've gone a long way to beginning to win the battles. The Bible says anybody that speaks in tongues, he defies, builds up himself. And I make it a duty to pray in tongues every single day. 
for as long as I can. Praise the Lord. And then the Bible says that after that, after that, the church in the new covenant began to grow. From day one, from day one, 3,000 people repented. Day one. That will show you, I, again, are you a minister, are you a pastor? And you want your church to grow. It is the, it is the Holy Spirit that does it. You cannot do it on your own. No, it's not possible. And if you are filled with the Holy Ghost, don't do it alone. Make sure the other people are filled as well. If you cannot do it, and I'm using that phrase, if you cannot, invite somebody, invite another minister that you have seen that people are filled with the Holy Ghost easily in his ministry. Call the person to come and minister in your church and get people filled. Praise the Lord. It is the power of the Holy Ghost that grows a church. It doesn't matter how knowledgeable you are in the scriptures and how much you teach them. The Holy Spirit makes a lot of difference. I've seen some people who are, they are struggling. They are struggling. They are doing whatever they can, energetic. The church is not growing. And when you go close to them, you find out that the power of the Holy Ghost is lacking in their life. I mean, ministers I have seen them. Praise the Lord. Let's look at Acts of the Apostles, chapter 6. Begin to read from verse 1. Now, in those days, when the numbers of disciples was multiplying, there arose a complaint against the Hebrews by the Hellenists, because their widows were neglected in the daily distribution. Then the twelve summoned the multitude of the disciples and said, It is not desirable that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Therefore, brethren, seek out from among you seven men of good reputation, full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word, and the saying pleased the whole multitude, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and the Holy Spirit, Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas, a proselyte from Antioch. When they sat before the apostles, and when they had prayed, they laid hands on them. Then the word of God spread. And the number of the disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem, and a great many of the priests were obedient to the faith. Amen. Again, the Holy Spirit, number one, gives wisdom to a people. There was a problem in the church, just as there's problem in every church. You can't avoid that. Even when Jesus had a congregation of 12 plus himself 13, Chorus also arrived. So the wisdom to administer is also part of what the Holy Spirit does in the church. In wisdom, Peter said, okay, let us choose people that will do this. Um, Danny Hall Prefect, Assistant Danny Hall Prefect, and so on and so forth. And the Bible says the seven people they chose were people filled with faith and of the Spirit. The Holy Spirit is people that they had seen that had been baptized in the Holy Ghost. And therefore they had faith. And therefore they had favor among the people. And Bible says when these people took over that business. And they were called deacons. When they took over that business. Things changed. And the word of God grew. The word of God grew. 
Christians multiplied. Disciples multiplied. It is what the Holy Ghost does in the church. In choosing leaders. In choosing leaders. Oh, something I heard some time ago was pathetic. It was pathetic. Somebody said, look, that in the church where he attends, that deacons are chosen from the tight book. The tight book. Tight register. This one has paid a million this month appointing. This one has been. Isn't that horrible? Without looking at the spiritual side of things, the knowledge base of, the, of, of these people, that is not good. Praise the Lord. The wisdom to choose leaders is the job of the Holy Spirit. Praise God. Let's, let's continue as we look at 1 Timothy chapter 3, 8 to 13. 1 Timothy 3, 8. Likewise, deacons must be reverent, not double-tongued, not giving to much wine, not greedy for money, holding the mystery of the faith with a pure conscience. But let those also first be tested, then let them serve as deacons, being found blameless. Likewise, their wives must be reverent. Okay, okay. Go to Acts of Apostles, chapter 13. Acts 13, 1 to 3. Acts of the Apostles, 1 to 3. Now, in the church that was at Antioch, there were certain prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Niger, Luc Lucius, Syrian, Manan, who had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch and Saul, as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, Now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Then, having fasted and prayed and laid hands on them, they sent them away. <laughs> One of them was called Diga. He was a black man. And if we go back to if, if you look at Acts of the Apostles chapter 2, on the day of Pentecost, there were some people from Libya, Libya in North Africa. And as you read the New Testament, you see people from Ethiopia, and so on and so forth. Some people say, well, the white man brought the church. No, they didn't. They didn't. He came straight from Jerusalem to Africa, even before the gospel went to, to Europe. Praise the Lord. Now, in Acts of the Apostles 13, the ministry, the people who were sent for missions were again appointed by the Holy Ghost. It's just not anybody. And close to that, very, very much related to that, the programs of the church were decided and announced by the Holy Spirit. Somebody said something that is very, very pathetic. He said, if there's a rapture today and the church is taken, that a lot of the programs of the church will still be going on. <laughs> Nothing changes. Why? Because those programs were not of God in the first place. We just sit and use our wisdom. No, that is why there's a lot of struggles in the churches. One of the reasons because the Holy Spirit is not given a chance to lead. Finally, how does that apply to you and I today? Let us look at um, let us look at Isaiah, Isaiah eleven, beginning to read from verse one. There shall come forth a rod from the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of the, his root. The spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, mm -hmm. the spirit of wisdom and understanding, mm -hmm. the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. Mm -hmm. His delight is in the fear of the Lord, and he shall not judge by the sight of his eyes, nor decide by the hearing of his ears. Okay, just, uh, just hold that place. The spirit of the Lord, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of understanding, the spirit of power and of might, 
That is what God has prepared for you and for me. The spirit of knowledge, the spirit of the fear of the Lord. The same Holy Spirit. The same Holy Spirit. You and I are entitled to the power of the Holy Ghost. And if we haven't received it since we repented, we should seek it. We should cry for the power of the Holy Ghost. So that will be it is not it is not selfishness, it is to serve God. That gladdens the heart of God because we begin to be effective and victorious. Number two, our decisions as individuals, even in our families, will no longer be what we just decide in our businesses, in our careers, in farming. If the Holy Spirit comes in and is leading us, things will be different. Things will be different. God has not meant it that we'll be out there doing our own thing without referring to him. No. God has made us to depend on him so he can guide us by the power of the Spirit so that we can prosper, so we can be healthy. And he said, for those of us who are leaders, those of us who go into different positions of leadership, it doesn't matter, you can be a compound head, you can be a community leader, you can be a chief, you can be, it does, you are in government, you are the police, civil service, God has meant it that the power of the Holy Ghost will be guiding us, guiding us, helping us to make a difference, to minister to his people. Read on. But with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips he shall slay the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt of his loins mm -hmm. and faithfulness the belt of his waist. Mm -hmm. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb. Peace. The leopard shall lie down with the young goat, mm -hmm. the calf and the young lion and of the fatling together. That and is, sorry, that is for community leaders. That is for town leaders. That is for local government chairmen. That is for local government councillors. That is for state governors. That is for women leaders. That's for youth leaders. That's for market uh, women leaders. Whatever leadership you are, that scripture says they should be. If you follow the leading and depend on the leading of the Holy Spirit, there will be peace in your reign. That is, God is so interested in everything we do, everywhere we are. That he has promised that the promise of the Father, that is the Holy Spirit, will help us, will lead us, make decisions that will bring peace. Praise the Lord. Let us let us pray. Sorry that we didn't finish that scripture, but let us pray because of our time. If you have not given your heart to Jesus, pray this prayer after me, dear Lord Jesus. I am a sinner. And I don't want to go to hell. Forgive all my sins. Come into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior. Write my name in the book of life, canceling from the book of death. Give me the grace to follow you to the end. Give me your Holy Spirit that I will live and work effectively for you. Thank you for answering. Lord, is anybody sick among us? Please stretch forth your hand and heal that your name and your name alone be glorified. Thank you for answering us, for we have prayed in Jesus' name. Amen.